Today I'm fishing at a rather interesting little stream and currently I'm trying to climb across the other side on these stepping stones. But I'm going to be doing some float fishing today and once we're done fishing here, hopefully we can catch a few fish. Carl, my brother, he's going to do some fishing as well on another little stream where he's going to try and catch some bigger ones. Ah! Oh no! There we go. Let's try and catch some fish. I found myself a nice little spot to start fishing in, but before I do so, I need to find the depth of the swim. I want to be fishing near the bottom because that's where I reckon most of the fish will be sat. To do this on a stream or river, it's really simple. You just take your float, cast it out, let it drift down with the flow. If the float pulls under, it means that your float is set too deep. It means that your shot or your hook is catching on the bottom and pulling the float down. And if that happens, you need to get your float and make it a bit shallower. If your float stays upright and doesn't pull under, it means that you're maybe set a little too shallow and you can start making it a bit deeper. I like to be fishing just off the bottom. I don't want to be catching the bottom every cast. So I find when my float starts pulling under, then take my float, make it a little bit shallower, and then I know I'm fishing at the perfect depth. I'm going to start throwing in some maggots into the swim to hopefully draw those fish in and get confident. Should we get fishing? Yeah. So I'm going to take a maggot a poor little maggot and put him on the hook. Is that animal cruelty? They're so small, I doubt they have brains. They can't be big brains, they can't have a conscious mind like a human. I hope. Every time I start float fishing, my eyes start watering because I'm just staring at the float. Oh yes, we have got one. That didn't take long. Oh, it's a chub. It's a baby chub. This is actually my first fishing trip of the year and my New Year's resolution is to catch a giant fish today. Can that be a New Year's resolution? I don't know. Oh no. I'm caught in a bush. Yeah, that's really not good. This will all be fine if I'm patient. 2,000 years later. Let's try again. And we got another one. What's it gonna be this time? Oh, it's a dace. It's almost quite hard to tell the difference between a small chub and a dace, but their mouths are slightly different and their tails are kind of a, they've got like a yellowy tint to them. And the anal fin. The anal fin is what, Carl? That's, the di that's how that's the main the, difference. Really? On a chub, it's convex. On a dace, it's concave. Oh, so it goes so in it goes rather than. Inwards on a chub and then outwards. Oh, I mean, wow. Inwards on a dace, outwards on a job. Oh, getting some good ID tips from Carl. You wrote a book about it, didn't you? Yeah, as I should know. What's it called, Carl? Simple Fishing Guide, but yeah, something like that. available on our website now. Let's get you back, Mr. Dace. With every single cast, I try to put a pinch of bait out. Because if you think about it, those maggots are going to be drifting down. And if I can put my hook bait within them, then it's going to look so natural to the fish, they won't even know that I'm here. So we'll do it again. We'll throw some bait in and then put my hook bait in with them and that's all going to be drifting down together. Well, it didn't work, but it will this time. I had a few bites in this first spot and then it started to slow up. Didn't catch anything for a while and then I caught this perch just now. So I'm going to move spot and try somewhere else. But look at that, useful. I love perch. They are stunning. Hopefully at some point today we're going to use the net to scoop a giant fish. Why did you just do a loop the loop? No, no, I didn't know where I was going. <laughs> I'm looking for another spot to try and this looks all right. However, there are a load of willow trees hanging in the water and I, if I try and fish in this spot, I'm probably going to get tangled. I'm looking for somewhere which is relatively straight with good depth. When you're float fishing, you want a nice long run to run the float down. And you also don't want loads of trees where you're gonna get snagged. So I'm gonna keep walking around and try and find somewhere else to fish. I think this is the spot. I can run my float the whole way down there around that corner. And it looks pretty deep as well. I do love fishing on flowing water. It's really intriguing watching the float 
like float down. And it's even better when the float goes under, which it didn't do. Maybe the fish need more enticing. Oh yeah, second try and we have one. Another dace, small but very beautiful. I hope you catch some big ones later, Carl, because I'm not doing a good job of catching the beast. Oh dear, I caught the bottom of the river. No. I found whilst float fishing on rivers, it's really handy to have quite a long rod because you're trying to control that float. You want your rod tip to be over the float at all times. So on a small river like this, I found this 11 foot float rod is perfect. If you're fishing a larger river, then a rod up to 13 or 14 foot would be even more handy. I've got a small reel on here with, I think this is five pound line, but I have got a, uh, a two pound hook link. And it's important to have a lighter hook link than your main line because it's very easy to get snagged. And when you snag up, you only want that little bit at the end to break because uh, that happened to me earlier. And it would have been really annoying if I had to retie the whole lot. I've got a little pouch here with some spares. Like I say, you sometimes snap your line and you need some spares. I've got some spare shot and hook links. Basically just spares of everything. So if anything goes wrong, I can retie. I'm going to keep loose feeding these maggots and hopefully we can pull a slightly bigger one out of this spot. Because the main flow in this swim is really close in to me, I can just drop this rig just there and it just floats down nicely. I then open the bail arm of the reel and just use my finger just to start and stop letting line off. If it's going a bit fast, I can always touch my finger on the spool and hold it back. And then when I want to let it go down fully, I just let my hand off and let it run down. Oh, on cue, we've got a fish. I'm gonna lift him. Oh, nice. Look at that, another dace. It's bigger than the other dace. Beautiful. Let's try and do the same again. Float fishing definitely involves a little bit more concentration than feeder fishing or when you're ledgering. Cause you've got to always keep an eye on that float and like control it the whole time, trying to make sure it doesn't drift into any snags or drift out of the flow. It's an art form and one that I definitely haven't mastered yet, but today I'm working on my skills. See that magpie? <laughs> one for sorrow, two for joy. Or is it one for joy, two for sorrow? I don't know. They are curious animals, aren't they? They're always, they're always looking for something. Apparently they find gold occasionally. Ooh, that is a very small fish. Can you see it from over there? It's, it's tiny. <laughs> it's a babby. Back when I started float fishing, whenever I had a bite, I'd always close the bail arm and then strike. But I realized that is actually very ineffective and there's a, a better way of doing it. So what you do is you let the float go down and if you have a bite, you simply just touch your finger on the spool. That means no line can come out. Then you make the strike. If you miss the bite, you simply let your finger off and let it go back down and you resume with your trot down the swim. If you have a fish, you then just close the bail arm and then bring, bring in the fish. It's something which sounds very small and boring, but actually it's really, uh, when I learned that, it made me a better float fisherman because it really does help. Let's see if we can show you exactly what I mean. Like that, and then you close the bell, and then you bring the fish. Just like that. <laughs> and another. It's a really good idea to try lots of different spots, especially when you're on such a small stream. If, if a spot dries up and you stop getting bites, just move somewhere else. And this is probably the last spot I'm gonna try on this particular river. It's not ideal because it's a very short run and then it quickly bends around to the other side, but I'll give it a go anyway. I reckon this is where the monster lives. Ooh.
Oh, yes. That was instant. No, wait, this feels quite big. What could this be? Oh, goodness, it's going upstream. No, what? This is big, Carl. You better be capturing all this on film. This is a, this is a lot bigger than anything else we've had today. It's a chub. This is so much bigger than all those other fish put together. Let's see if we can get it in the net. Come here. Yes. There we go. Biggest fish of the day. I was not expecting that. It fought so hard. It was swimming so fast upstream. I think I'll give it one more drop in this swim before we get moving on to another spot. This is where you got hyperthermia, Carl. Well, this spot's pretty good. Oh, this is a bit bigger. Definitely bigger. Whoa, it's really charging about. Oh, looks like a trout. It is a trout. Yes. How beautiful is that? All these red spots down the middle of the fish. Look how big their mouths are. The hook looks tiny inside there. Oh, what a nice surprise. About half an hour has passed since you saw us last, and I am the other one. <laughs> I'm the brother that's not that's not Alex. You were watching Alex earlier. For those of you who don't watch this channel regularly, there's two of us, Carl and Alex. Alex is behind the camera, and I'm now in front of it. Where Alex was fishing earlier, he was using a float. Uh, I've come to one of my favorite little streams, and I'm going to use the feeder. So we'll cover some tactics and stuff, how to get the best out of your feeder fishing. Um, but um, hopefully I can catch something bigger than what Alex caught this morning. My maggot feeder rig consists of obviously a maggot feeder that slides on the line. I've threaded that onto my main line. Then there is a speed bead. This is basically a quick chain swivel with a protective bead over the top of it. That means that it stops the feeder as it slides down, but also it allows me to loop on and off uh, hook length. The hook length is just the section of line, normally lighter than your main line, that connects to your hook. On the end, there's a size 18 hook, which is quite small, but I'm aiming for, you know, a mixture of species today, and I'm just gonna fish with one or two maggots on the hook. So a size 18 is perfect. One tip that I'll give you when maggot feeder fishing is put your hook bait on first. Once that is hooked, it's gonna stay there, it's not gonna go anywhere. And then you can fill up your maggot feeder. I've actually done it before where I've done it the other way round. I filled up my maggot feeder with maggots, then I've started faffing around, putting the hook bait on, and by the time you're finished, half the maggots have wriggled out of the feeder. So it's better to do it hook, hook bait first. I'll swing it out into the river, let it sink to the bottom. And uh, I like to use a bank stick, or at least just have something to rest the rod on when I'm feeder fishing. Because it keeps the rod tip still. And that means that if it twitches or moves, I know that it's a fish. It's not me like, bouncing the rod around. I'll put a little bit of tension in the line. Not loads, just so that the rod tip is bent ever so slightly. And then I'll be able to see a bite if it pulls away, but I'll also be able to see a bite if it springs back towards me. I'm getting nibbles already. <laughs> and normally I'll strike if there's a solid tapping on the rod tip. If it just vibrates and stops, it's probably like a minnow or a tiny fish that's just nipped at the bait. But if it plucks like that, there's almost certainly a fish down there with your bait in its mouth. Oh, that's one on. There we go. The first bite. First fish is a perch, only a little one. There are some perch in here that are a lot, lot bigger than this. About 10 times bigger than this. Like perch often do, he's kind of swallowed the hook. I'll use my disgorger to get it out. 
I think today's going to be pretty good down here. The, co the conditions are perfect with the slight bit of colour in the water, a bit more flow than normal. There's a couple of big ones up there. Don't know if you can see them splashing around. That's a little one. I just noticed there's a dog poo bag right in front of me. Luckily, my hook's gone straight into it. Unluckily, sorry. Whose idea was it to come here? Every cast, there's a fish. There's lots of perch down there. A little bit bigger than that last one. I was distracted. I wasn't watching the rod tip because there was a dog jumping in the river again. Oh mate, I've got another one. It's crazy down here. <laughs> Mad. I think one of the biggest things I've learned about feeder fishing, especially maggot feeder, is that if you haven't had any bites in a while, it's worth just recasting. Yeah, you might not have had any bites, but I tend to find regular recasting really important because the point of the maggot feeder is to be feeding the swim pretty much at all times. And maggots, they don't really fill the fish up very much. And I'm, I'm using quite a small maggot feeder today. So uh, recasting regularly just means there's a trickle of fresh bait going into the swim. There's a reason for the fish to, you know, seek out your hook bait. Regular casting when using the maggot feeder is really, really helpful to get the swim going, draw in more fish and to get more bites. Fish on! That looks like a bream. Great for multi-species, uh, little streams like this. You'd be so surprised by the number of different fish that you can catch. Pretty cool. I'll take that. Unlike Alex, who was float fishing earlier, I'm feeder fishing, and that kind of needs a more suitable rod. Uh, you can't feed a fish so easily if the rod tip is stiff and you can't see when the fish takes the bait. Alex can obviously watch his float go under, but I, however, I'm having to watch the tip of the rod for any you know, twitches or movements. I like to use a, uh, a nice short, like nine or 10 foot feeder fishing rod for streams like this and small rivers. But the most important thing about the rod is that the tip is delicate and sensitive. Dedicated feeder rods like this will normally come with a, a white, yellow or red visual tip. And it will say on the side how many ounces the tip is. And this is three quarters of an ounce. So that's the amount of weight required to pull the rod tip round to 90 degrees. That makes this a very sensitive, delicate rod, perfect for spotting bites from small fish. On a larger river, maybe you're fishing for barbel and chub with large two or three ounce feeders, you'd probably want to use maybe a three ounce quiver tip, just because you'd probably end up snapping a tip like this if you tried to cast a really long way with a big feeder. But for this sort of work, a delicate quiver tip is absolutely perfect. Wow, lovely. I don't actually catch roach out of this stream very often, so that's a bit of a surprise. I've moved spot now. The other area just dried up, stopped getting any bites. And I think this swim is a prime example of why I've chosen to fish maggot feeder here rather than float fishing. Basically, if your swim has got a consistent depth and a nice run of water where you can stand at the top and watch the float drift down, then float fishing is great. But when you've got to swirling water or you've just got a real deep hole and then it goes shallow there and it's shallow up here and there's loads of branches and snags, you kind of have to just have your bait anchored in one spot. If I tried to float fish around here, it would be quite difficult. The float would run down, it gets shallow there, the bait would just hit the bottom and I'd probably end up getting snagged in these branches. So some spots are better for float fishing, others are better for feeder fishing and really you'll only figure out for certain what's going to work best by trying them. It's worth having you know a float and a feeder rod if you like this style of fishing uh, and it's worth getting to know both tactics but in this particular spot it's deep just there I want to anchor my bait on the bottom where hopefully some large fish will live and we'll see if I can get one more fish to finish the day off. What do we have here? What is it going to be? Uh, it's going to be a perch, judging by the fight. 
Oh, it is. And it's straight in the net. Cool, that's a good result. That's what we were after. It's challenging conditions today. Most larger rivers were completely flooded and unfishable, but the little streams produced us a range of species on the float and maggot feeder. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next video. But today we're gonna be, ah, oh, no. We're gonna be falling in the river.